Greenwood Academy in Birmingham offers its Key Stage 4 students the opportunity to study a BTEC in music and part of the course specification requires them to learn about the music industry specifically to understand different types of organisations that make up the music industry and different job roles within the industry. And perhaps not surprisingly when you look at exam papers for the course there are questions about that and typically this is, is an example they're presented with a, a scenario a an imaginary situation in this case about Suki's studio where they're asked to demonstrate they understand the different roles in a recording studios and how the studio would work in, in practice and the brief from the teacher really wanted to try and address that to provide the students with something more real ideally local something more meaningful so they could connect what they're learning about in theory with with the reality that there actually are real jobs it's not just some theoretical academic exercise so Birmingham has a thriving music industry and there are a number of recording studios we approached one and so we lined up this meeting with the director of the Mushrooms which is one of the the leading recording studios in the city to discuss how the project might work, what we might ask them to do. And part of this preparation was thinking about what type of challenge, a real version of the exam question that we might present the students. And after that visit, it was clear that Matt, the director from The Mushrooms, was very happy to be involved. We drafted some slides which packaged up uh, something about The Mushrooms, said what they did, there were links to the website so they could, the students could find out more about the organisation and what they did. There were examples of their clients' recordings in the studio. The challenge that was presented by Matt within a video message that he'd produced was a question about whether in what they do at the studio they were missing a trick and he was asking for the students to come up with some bright ideas, some fresh thinking about that. So what we're going to see is just a short clip from this walk through the studio he did a tour around their facilities several recording studios and the technology that was involved and the challenge that was presented to the students this is a room where bands would come and rehearse or perform to record and if they are going to be recorded from this room we would go upstairs into control room number one which i'll show you at the very very end these rooms are multi-purpose. They are recording rooms and they are rehearsal stroke practice rooms as well. So tonight, from about six o'clock, I'm not recording in here, but there will be a band in here rehearsing. And this room will be busy, as will all of the other rooms tonight, actually, up until about 10 o'clock when we finish. Some studios go a little bit later. I think 10 o'clock's enough. It's still going to be 11 o'clock by the time I get home, so 10 p.m. is more than enough. Nice wide room, over six metres long, over four metres wide. Three metres tall is the ceiling, and again, please notice the acoustic treatments on the wall to control the acoustic environment that we're in. Some softening on the ceiling above the drum kit, that really, really helps when trying to capture the drum recordings. Bands come in here, they set up as a band, and we'll record them as a band, probably over to the vocals afterwards. That's how we would operate in here. You've seen the mushrooms, you've seen what we've got. I've spoken a little bit about what we do. Um, I probably haven't said too much about the kind of people that come here. But it's important that you guys know what our client base is, and I might need some help with this. Uh, we, in the main, look after local musicians, people that might be in bands, might enjoy doing a bit of recording, uh, rehearsing, performing, that kind of thing. They would come and see us at night to use rehearsal facilities to come and do recording uh, to do recordings using the the controlling facilities. We also <coughs> we also have a side of our business that looks after people who are not so experienced that um, that might want to come and sing a song because they've been told that uh, they can sing or they can play but they don't know how to get started they're not in a band they're not ex in ex they're not experienced they maybe don't come from a family that has a lot of music in in the house but we would come we, we would let them come in and we would be delicate with them and we'd look after them and we'd talk them through the process of recording as I'm talking a little bit now. But I'm wondering if I'm missing a trick and I'm wondering if there's anyone else that I could appeal to that could come and use this facility at a very competitive rate that we could provide a service for them that we don't currently provide or, or 
um, a customer that we don't currently have facilities for that I could develop facilities for or a service for. So that's my question to you guys. Having seen what we've got, what, we've do, what we do, um, and having spoken about the kind of skills required, is there anything else I could offer and is there anyone else I could offer that to? So the students were presented with this real challenge by Matt. He wanted to hear their bright ideas about how else the Mushrooms could develop its business. And he knew that they were studying music and they would have an interest and they'd found out something from the virtual tour that he'd provided of their facilities and the students had done some other research on the website as well. So they had the knowledge that they needed to do that. And they were asked by the teacher and supported by the teacher to put together PowerPoint presentations with their ideas. And you can see some examples here. What had been envisaged at the outset was that they would be going into the studio to present those ideas to Matt and he would give some feedback. So they would get a chance to see the place firsthand. It wouldn't take long. Matt didn't have to do any work. He would just respond informally to what the students had said. But then the coronavirus crisis hit. Clearly, students found themselves at home, away from school, and the mushrooms was closed. What happened, in fact, was that Matt recorded a response to the students who had still sent in their work, and that this response from Matt was relayed back to the students who were at home. So this is just the introduction of the message that he fed them, where he went in a 10-minute video through each of the ideas that the students had presented. Hi everybody, uh, Matt here from the Mushroom Studios in Birmingham. Thank you for your feedback that you sent me regarding uh, the short film I made for you uh, probably a couple of months ago now. The world's changed a bit, hasn't it, since last time uh, uh, we were discussing studio stuff. Anyway, uh, we're shut at the moment, so what we're doing is we're having uh, some maintenance time, I'll show you. It's all a bit of a mess at the moment, with lots of stuff kicking about, lots of connectors and cabling and wires and soldering that we're doing just to try and make use of our time in this downtime period. Uh, I'm sure you guys are all working hard from home um, with the help of your teachers and tutors, which is good. Uh, do keep trying to stay focused and work hard at all of your subjects. Let me go through the this little bit of feedback that you've sent me then and um, I'll give you my thoughts on that. Some great ideas, thank you very much, well done. A lot of the stuff we already do, we might not tell people we do it so much, but we do in fact do it. But let's go through. Uh, the Mushroom Studios, improvements. Try and get a few more famous people into the studio to publicise your studio. Great idea. Always difficult getting famous folk in. Uh, or what we could do is we could take folk that aren't famous and try and help them become famous. We do that quite a lot at the studio. In the end of project evaluation, the teacher states that it made the lessons much more engaging. That was her objective at the outset. And she particularly singles out the virtual studio tour as being valuable, not just looking around the studio, but seeing all the equipment as well. They liked that. But she did feel that the project could have been more extended, that it could have been taken longer and developed a bit more. And she acknowledges that she'd want to do that if she did it again, because in her summary she says, I would very much like to repeat the project with the next cohort of students and to develop the challenge. And it's interesting to see that as well as developing their knowledge about the music industry, she recognised that it developed some skills as well. She identifies specifically listening, presenting, problem solving and creativity. And to a large degree that's mirrored in the feedback from students. And you can see here one of the feedback forms from Andrew. Not only does Andrew give it a four out of five in terms of being interesting and purposeful, but he identifies listening, creativity, presenting and teamwork as skills that he felt he developed as a result of being involved in the project. He also identifies learning about individual skills and abilities, thinking about my personal choices and future direction, things that are considering his life beyond school. And in summary, he says, what did he particularly feel proud of? Giving Matt some advice on his studio 
and also finding out more about his studio and also working as a team to present ideas in the class. Learning about something that would be valuable for his BTEC, but also getting a glimpse of life beyond school.